Hi, this is Waylon with Eureka Natural Foods. Uh, we're here today to show you guys a little brief intro primer to some basic knife skills um, with the idea that maybe this year we're going to kind of give you guys an intro to uh, basic cooking skills. I want to kind of get something out every month for you. So right now we're going to start with the most basic, which is uh, knives, uh, how to pick them out, how to use them properly, how to judge quality, and then I'll show you a few quick techniques that will um, kind of basically treat you like one of my employees on the first day. Uh, how, do, how do we handle knives in the kitchen? What's the appropriate way in a professional setting? So, um, a couple things I'll show right here. First off, is there's a variety of different knives that we use in the kitchen, um, and they have different uses. One of the more common questions that I do get is why do we have so many knives, and what do we do with different styles? Um, I'll just point out little things like, for instance, this is my petty knife. Um, or my detail knife I'm very fond of. This is one that's got a long, thin blade and uh, it would be used for like deveining shrimp or deboning a chicken thigh, something very particular where you can't quite even get your hand in there to do the job. Uh, other knives, for instance, like this one, this is a basic chef knife. This is something you're gonna use for almost any task. I can chop an onion, I can uh, take its part a side of beef with this. So a chef knife is a, is a good investment for your kitchen. Um, and then this is something we call a santoku, um, which is a Japanese word for three virtues. It chops, it dices, it slices, and that's about it. So this is a knife I'd use for a lot of veg prep. This is something I'd use for anything. And this is a detail knife. We don't pull these out often, but when you have it, you're glad to have something small like that you can use, even if you're just slicing steak. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about the different parts of a knife, because I know that not everyone is familiar with the vocabulary. Um, this little component here, the part where the blade itself extends into the handle all the way through, that's called the tang. Um, and the tang is really important because what that means is that you're actually hanging on to your knife. You're not just holding on to a handle that's glued to your knife. And that's a really important indicator of quality. So if you guys are shopping for knives or if you're just digging through an old drawer um, and you see that, that's a pretty good indicator. That knife is worth your time to kind of sharpen up and treat well. Um, the other thing I'll point out other than that is you see things like this sometimes on the bottom of a knife. That's a guard. That's to keep you from grabbing the blade when you're using it. Really great for guys at home or if you're just learning or perhaps you're a little nervous with a knife, your first time using a real sharp one. Uh, when you get pretty experienced in the kitchen, you'll notice a lot of knives come without guards, a little more dangerous to handle. It also is going to give you uh, a lot longer lifespan for that knife. This is one I could use for 20 years after this knife would not be useful anymore. So that's just a little bit about our knives. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to hone up a blade here real quick. Um, I find that honing is really personal. Every chef I know does it slightly differently and if you want to get into the nitty gritty, there's some great primers on YouTube that can kind of show you how to really master an edge on a knife. Uh, today I'm just going to show you how to get it working. I typically hold the honer with the point down so that you're not working towards yourself. That's obviously pretty bad news. Number one rule with a knife is always cut away from yourself. And you're gonna hear that a couple times today. I kind of try and mimic the angle that I know that my blade's at, and then we just give it, I'm actually letting gravity do most of the work, and I'm not applying pressure. I'm just letting the blade drag over the groove. And then coming from the other way, I like to finish this way. I'll show you how I do it at full speed. If I'm in a hurry in the kitchen, just get a knife. And then you're going to kind of finish like this. Sometimes you can float the blade down. Once again, angle is important, that you hold it at the proper angle. Safety is important. Pressure is not. You can get the same job done with less pressure and a few extra strokes. Be safe out there, folks. Remember, one side of this knife is designed to be sharp. Make sure you use and don't grab the sharp side. Um, one thing I will point out as well is a lot of people I see do this all the time. They touch a knife blade to see how sharp it is. Look, I'm a professional chef. We can touch our knives. We're pretty good at this. But I'll tell you the safest way to test is almost always to touch your thumbnail. A sharp knife has a very different feel on your thumbnail than a dull knife, and it's not a part of your body that you can cut. All right, that's the basic vocabulary there. I've shown you guys how to hone a couple things. Um, and I want to work today. We're going to get busy. I'm probably going to chop an onion for you and show you a few tricks. But the most important thing is I want you all to kind of focus on the left hand. I notice most people, they see the skills that a chef has or what he's doing. What they don't notice is all the maneuvers that your left hand goes through to stay out of the way. So I'm going to show you a few tricks and grips you can use that are going to help you with speed, efficiency, and cleanliness in general. All right, so I'm gonna show you with chopping an onion a few basic skills here. Um, one thing I'll note is that I have a very large cutting board for this task. 
that's something that is just basic safety. If you're trying to do a lot of work on a small board, you're going to get in your own way. Um, highly recommend you invest in nice boards. I will never recommend a glass cutting board. Um, and if you guys have wooden boards, they're wonderful, but you got to take a lot of care of them. These nice plastic ones, they're antimicrobial, they're recyclable, they're very sustainable. This is what we use in the industry, just nationwide, I can tell you. And then when you get started, something I've omitted is I do have a wet rag under my cutting board here. What that means is that it scoots very, very little. Um, that's a very basic step you can take to avoid chasing your board and your product all around your station here. It's just a real simple step you can take. Make sure you have a firm grip on your knife. Uh, depending on how comfortable you are, you might hold it back here. You might hold it as far up as on the blade. I find it's very common for people who are new to kind of get a grip far up on the blade like that. It makes you feel like you have a lot more control. Take some of the pressure off your wrist. I'm just going to take the onion real close to the ends and slide it on back, remove them, set the guy up on the flat surface that I've created, chop her in half. Obviously, peeling the onion is a whole different skill set, and we get really quick at doing this in the kitchen. I can show you some tricks for this in our upcoming videos. For the moment, though, I just want to focus on the knife itself. And I'm going to go ahead and chop and peel three of these real quick so you guys can get a feel for what my workflow is like. Once again, I hold the onion very firmly. I actually place my left hand on the board so I can stand here with a great deal of support. My right hand, I point the point on the bottom and I just slide it back to remove it. This means that even if my right hand is really nervous with the knife, I'm so well planted here, there's no way I'm going to have anything go wrong. And I don't come within two inches of my left hand. A little bit of an odd motion. <laughs> a lot of times when you're peeling onions, folks, you get this one layer inside that's really thin. Make sure you grab that one too. It does not come out well in your soups or in your stocks. So. And another thing I'll note, something I warn people about usually when they're new to the kitchen, uh, your, this job is about 90% cleaning. So one thing you'll notice is as soon as I'm done peeling these onions, I'm going to wipe up my station and get it real tidy here. Uh, same thing at home, I find that if you clean as you go, um, you don't run out of room as quickly on your cabinet top, so I'll put it that way. So. Alright, I'm just going to take a moment here, as I said, I'm going to tidy this area, try not to lose track of what I'm doing. you the quick and easy way. Usually what I tell people whenever they're brand new is you want to hold it with what we call the claw. You don't want your fingers out. You want them to come back like this. That way you can't cut them. Depending on the size you want, just go ahead and give it a brief chop or across this way. One thing you will notice is I've kind of left the end there. Uh, that's for whenever you're still learning. It means you don't have to get quite so close to your hand as you chop. And then I'll come through the other way very simply. Leave that last little bit there. And what you see is that allowing that last little piece to hold the onion together keeps you from having it fall apart. So I'll show you this way. If I were to do it all the way through the onion, I immediately start having little pieces I'm chasing. And then now I have to have a little bit more skill to hold the whole thing steady as I chop through. So until you get a little more comfortable with your claw, I'll advise you just leave that last little bit of flesh right there. Move on through and you can chop that piece last. So that's the basic way. That's pretty much the first way most of us learn to chop an onion in the kitchen. If you're a little quicker with a knife, if your knives are good and sharp and you're proud of them and you want to see a few more tricks, I'll show you how I do it. Uh, typically I'm going to use my fingers not with my pads in because they're very easy to cut, but rather with my pads out so that I can't. And I'm going to go ahead and just give that onion a quick chop like that and then go over and do it to this guy here. And if your knife is long enough, you can just do both of them at the same time. One thing some of you guys are probably noticing is that my left hand does some really unusual maneuvers there. I think that was this motion. As we said, you know, your right hand gets really good with a knife. You get quick, you get efficient, you only have a couple moves you learn. 
Your left hand gets very, very dexterous. You're gonna learn how to stay out of your way, how to move, how to hold a stack of things properly. That's just part of the job. Over time, those skills come. One of the things you can do in the meantime, though, is we allow contact between this part of the knife, right here, which we call the cheek, which is not the spine or the edge, but rather this flat part in between. That part is designed to touch your hand for guidance. So what I'll do is I'll actually rest that against my hand, make sure I'm not gonna cut myself, and use it. That means that my left hand is actually the one determining where my cuts go. My right hand is just dumbly following along. Same thing this. So as you can see, in between each chop, I'm actually moving my left hand out of the way with a physical contact from the blade. Um, that makes most people really uncomfortable for the first few weeks. And then very quickly what you learn is that it allows you to feel your cuts. You don't have to watch your hand as closely. Won't advise you look away, but you'll see what I mean as you get comfortable touching your finger with the cheek. And then recognizing, of course, not to touch the sharp part. That's the most basic intro I can give you guys. Once again, remember, there's multiple varieties of knife. Always choose the right knife for your job. I chose this one because it excels at vegetable prep and because the lack of a guard means I can chop a little more onions at once. This is a great knife for any all purpose. If you're only buying one knife for at home use, I'm gonna recommend a chef knife with a gentle taper and a nice long, I know this is a full tang knife, but looking for something like this one where your tang goes all the way through, you're gonna look for a quality product and the final comment I'll make is that a sharp knife is a safe knife. Um, one of our classes will be about sharpening knives properly, um, and I look forward to talking to you about that a little bit. But just recognize there's nothing more dangerous than a dull knife. Uh, it requires you to use extra pressure, and when it slips, it slips that much harder. Um, that's especially bad with serrated knives. So I always recommend a nice straight edge knife. Learn to take care of it, learn to hone it properly, and uh, it's the most effective tool you'll ever need with it. Uh, once again, this is Waylon with Eureka Natural Foods. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you can look forward to more of these coming in the future. Um, and hopefully we're going to start getting into some really more detailed things. So next month we might handle mirepoix. I may get you guys to learn a little bit about making stocks. We're going into some more detailed knife cuts. I can show you slicing, dicing, mincing. Um, I'm also kind of curious what the people of uh, Eureka and Humboldt really want to know. So if you've got any questions about how we do things here at Eureka Natural Foods, feel free to leave a comment below or let us know what you're interested in. Thank you very much.